In 1979, the 11th installment of the James Bond series made its debut Moonraker. This film introduced Roger Moore as the iconic character for the fourth time. Co-starring alongside Moore were Lois Childs, Michael Lonsdale, Corinne Cleary, and Richard Keel, all contributing to the magic of this classic. As the story unfolds, viewers are taken on a thrilling journey filled with action and suspense. Who can forget the captivating scenes and unforgettable performances? Let's delve into the narrative of this cinematic masterpiece. The decision to produce Moonraker, released in 1979, was influenced by the rising popularity of science fiction films, particularly after the success of Star Wars. Producers opted for this theme over For Your Eyes Only, another Bond storyline. This choice led to filming primarily taking place in France, making the most of its diverse landscapes and settings. France offered various iconic backdrops for this classic, including some scenes shot at the Chateau de Vaux-le-Vicomte and the Palais Bulls located near Cannes. These luxurious French sites reflected the opulence often associated with James Bond movies. Additional filming didn't stay limited to Europe, but extended further into exotic locales like Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where breathtaking shots of the city's carnival parade were captured. In South America, Guatemala also served as one of the filming locations, featuring lush jungle scenery and ancient Mayan ruins. Back in North America, more specific U.S.-based shooting spots included California's NASA Ames Research Center, which added authenticity when portraying space-related content. Furthermore, the famous Cable State Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, became a prominent feature during chase sequences. The production team left their footprints across three continents while creating Moonraker, capturing unique aspects of different cultures and environments along the way. Each location contributed significantly to shaping this beloved film, offering audiences around the globe glimpses of recognizable landmarks combined with previously unseen vistas. From European elegance to tropical exuberance and American ingenuity, this mix of international flavors made Moonraker truly memorable. However, it doesn't end here. Keep exploring other facets of this fascinating movie. Released in 1979, Moonraker was a movie that stood out for its significant production cost and visual effects. The film had a budget of about $34 million, which was a substantial increase from its predecessor, The Spy Who Loved Me from 1977. This increase in budget was evident in the movie's visuals, which received considerable praise. However, the reception of the movie was mixed. While some critics appreciated the action-packed space adventure, others found the plot to be far-fetched. Despite the mixed reviews, Moonraker was a visual spectacle that captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. The story revolves around a space shuttle called Moonraker, which is hijacked, leading James Bond to investigate Hugo Drax. As Bond delves deeper, he uncovers a sinister plot involving a nerve gas genocide. The movie takes viewers on a thrilling ride, filled with suspense and intrigue as Bond races against time to save the world from a deadly threat. In essence, Moonraker is a classic example of a high-budget, action-packed movie that combines visual effects with a gripping plot. Despite the mixed reviews, it remains a significant milestone in the world of cinema, showcasing the power of visual storytelling. In the thrilling opening scene of Moonraker, audiences were treated to an exhilarating skydiving sequence featuring James Bond, the iconic villain Jaws, and an unfortunate pilot. This action-packed segment was no easy feat to capture, presenting numerous challenges during filming. To achieve the breathtaking freefall scenes, the production team relied on mounting cameras onto the helmets of other skydivers. This technique allowed them to record stunning visuals of the actors in mid-air, plunging towards Earth at breakneck speeds. However, it took considerable effort and time to perfect these shots. Over five grueling weeks, the crew conducted a staggering 88 jumps, each one aimed at capturing the perfect footage for just two minutes of screen time. The risks involved in shooting these sequences cannot be understated. Skydivers had to navigate unpredictable weather conditions while maintaining control of their bodies and equipment. Moreover, they needed to coordinate their movements flawlessly with those of their stunt doubles and fellow actors. Despite these difficulties, the cast and crew persevered, resulting in some of the most memorable action scenes ever filmed for this classic. In the production of the 1979 film Moonraker, an unusual musical connection was formed between two major players in Hollywood. Producer Albert Broccoli, known for his work on the James Bond franchise, reached out to renowned director Steven Spielberg for permission to use music from his hit film Close Encounters of the Third Kind. 
the desired excerpt would serve as an electronic door lock entry code in Moonraker. This collaboration marked an intriguing intersection of two cinematic universes. Interestingly, this interaction set the stage for future collaborative opportunities. Later, when working on The Goonies, Spielberg returned the favor by requesting the iconic Seven theme for usage in the film. Moreover, he expressed a desire to helm a Bond picture himself. However, fate had other plans, leading him to direct another timeless adventure, Raiders of the Lost Ark. This unique exchange highlights the camaraderie and mutual respect among industry giants during the late 20th century. Even though their paths didn't cross again professionally, one can't help but wonder what a Spielberg-directed Bond flick might have looked like. Perhaps it's best left to our imaginations, forever intertwined with the legacy of both legendary franchises. After all, sometimes, these behind-the-scenes stories prove just as captivating as the films themselves. In the production of the 1979 film Moonraker, lead actor Roger Moore faced a health challenge. He suffered from a kidney stone attack, causing his late arrival to the Rio shoot. Despite the discomfort, Moore promptly began filming upon his arrival. The film's stunt team had to get creative to ensure smooth shooting. They enlisted the help of Jake Lombard, a veteran skydiver. Lombard's resemblance to Moore, after cutting his hair and shaving, made him an ideal stand-in for many close-up shots. This substitution allowed the filming to continue without significant delays, ensuring the movie's timely completion. The space shuttle design in Moonraker was remarkable, considering that filming began before the finalization of the space shuttle design by NASA. The film's rendering of the space shuttle turned out to be impressively accurate, showcasing the movie's attention to detail and commitment to realism. Initially, Frank Sinatra was approached to sing the theme song for this classic, but things took a different turn. Eventually, the iconic Shirley Bassey sang the theme song, titled Moonraker, which became a memorable part of the movie's soundtrack. The theme song, like the space shuttle design, was an essential aspect of the movie's overall appeal, leaving a lasting impact on audiences. As the space shuttle design and theme song were being developed, the movie's production continued to evolve, creating a captivating experience for audiences. The movie's themes and visuals resonated with older adults who found the storyline and special effects intriguing and engaging. In the end, Moonraker became a testament to the power of cinema, showcasing the versatility of its cast and crew, and leaving a lasting legacy in the world of movies. The space shuttle design and theme song were just two of the many elements that contributed to the movie's enduring appeal making it a classic that continues to be cherished by audiences today. In early storyboard plans for Moonraker, a henchman named Ratz was set to make an appearance but was eventually dropped from the film. Despite his absence, the movie still boasts a number of memorable elements, including some cleverly placed one-liners. For instance, when Jaws first appears on screen, Q quips, I believe he's attempting re-entry. These types of jokes add a touch of humor to the otherwise action-packed plot. Interestingly, actor Roger Moore has revealed that filming the love scene in Moonraker proved to be quite challenging for him. While he doesn't go into detail about what made it so difficult, it's clear that the physical demands of the scene took their toll on the veteran actor. Regardless, the scene remains a significant moment in the film, highlighting the romantic tension between Bond and his leading lady. Overall, Moonraker offers audiences a thrilling ride through space and beyond, complete with witty dialogue and exciting stunts. From its initial concept stages to its eventual release, the film proves to be a true classic in the James Bond franchise. Lois Childs, the actress who played the role of Holly Goodhead in Moonraker, had a wonderful experience working with Roger Moore. She found him to be incredibly kind and inclusive, making the set a great place to be. Childs was particularly impressed by Moore's ability to make everyone feel valued and heard, which she felt contributed to the overall success of the movie. Childs recalled that Moore was always approachable and willing to listen to others' ideas, which created a positive and collaborative atmosphere. She also appreciated how he took the time to get to know the cast and crew, making an effort to build relationships and create a sense of community. Despite the pressures of working on a big-budget film, Moore remained calm and composed, never losing his sense of humor or his kindness. Childs found this to be incredibly refreshing and inspiring and it made her enjoy the experience of working on Moonraker even more. Overall, Lois Childs had a wonderful time working with Roger Moore on Moonraker, and she will always cherish the memories of their time together on set. She believes that his inclusive and kind nature played a significant role in making the movie the success that it was. 
Prepare to travel back in time to 1979 when the movie Moonraker, starring Roger Moore as James Bond, hit the big screen. This film, the 11th in the iconic franchise, stood out for its high production cost and spectacular space scenes, which were innovative for the time. Set against the backdrop of the Cold War, Moonraker follows Agent 7 as he investigates the mysterious disappearance of a spaceship and uncovers a sinister plot by villain Hugo Drax. With jaw-dropping stunts, witty dialogue, and stunning locations, this classic remains a fan favorite today. As we delve into the storyline, you may notice how it reflects the era's concerns over space exploration and geopolitical tensions. Despite being almost four decades old, many elements still resonate with contemporary audiences. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this thrilling journey filled with action, suspense, and a touch of humor. The casting process for the 1979 movie, Moonraker, was a fascinating journey. Producers started by considering Roger Moore for the lead role of James Bond, ultimately deciding he was the best fit due to his successful portrayal in previous Bond films. For the female lead, Holly Goodhead, the producers sought an accomplished actress with great screen presence. Lois Childs, a former model, an actress known for her roles in The Way We Were, and Smokey and the Bandit, won the part. The role of Hugo Drax, the villain, required a menacing and charismatic actor. Michael Lonsdale, a renowned French actor, was chosen for his ability to balance both qualities. The casting of Jaws, one of the most iconic henchmen in the Bond series, was a bit more unconventional. Richard Keel, a towering actor with a distinctive appearance, was selected for his unique presence and ability to bring depth to a seemingly one-dimensional character. The casting directors also looked for actors who could bring humor and charm to their roles, such as Corin Clary as Corin Dufour and Bernard Lee as M. In the end, the cast of Moonraker came together to create a memorable and entertaining film, each actor bringing their unique talents to the table. The making of Moonraker, the 1979 James Bond film, was steered by British director Lewis Gilbert. Known for his work on three Bond films, Gilbert brought a consistent style and panache to the franchise. His background in comedy influenced his treatment of the source material, often leaning towards lightheartedness and humor. Gilbert's approach to Moonraker was characterized by grandiose sets and spectacular stunts. He once said, I like big scenes, I like movement, I like action. This is evident in the film's climactic sequence set in space, which was unprecedented at the time. To bring this vision to life, he collaborated closely with production designer Ken Adam and special effects supervisor Derek Meddings. The collaboration between Gilbert and the cast was equally significant. Actor Roger Moore, who played Bond, appreciated Gilbert's calm demeanor on set, stating that it helped him deliver one of his best performances as the suave spy. For key roles like Holly Goodhead, Gilbert sought out talented actresses such as Lois Childs, who could hold their own against Moore's charismatic performance. Drawing inspiration from Ian Fleming's novel, but also inspired by the late 70s sci-fi craze, Gilbert crafted a unique blend of espionage and science fiction. Despite its deviation from traditional Bond themes, Moonraker remains a beloved entry in the series, reflecting Gilbert's distinctive directorial vision. The production of the 1979 movie, Moonraker, was a massive undertaking. The film, known for its extravagant set designs, was primarily shot in France, Italy, and Brazil. In France, the team transformed the famous Chateau de Vaux le Vicomte into a luxurious space station. The chateau's grandeur provided the perfect backdrop for the film's futuristic setting. However, the process of transforming the historic site into a space station was no easy task. It required meticulous planning and execution to ensure the chateau's preservation while creating a convincing set. In Italy, the production moved to the stunning city of Venice. The city's canals and architecture were featured prominently in the film's gondola chase scene. To capture these scenes, the film crew had to navigate the city's narrow waterways, often dealing with tight spaces and heavy boat traffic. Brazil's Rio de Janeiro served as the location for the film's climactic battle scene. The production team had to coordinate with local authorities to shut down a section of the city's iconic Copacabana Beach. This allowed them to build the necessary set pieces and film the high action scenes. Despite these logistical challenges, the production of Moonraker was also marked by innovative techniques and technologies. The film made extensive use of model miniatures and motion control cameras to create its elaborate special effects. These technologies allowed the filmmakers to create a believable and immersive science fiction world. In conclusion, 
The production of Moonraker was a complex endeavor that required significant planning, coordination, and innovation. The film's stunning set designs and special effects continue to captivate audiences today. The creation of the Moonraker score was a collaborative effort between composer John Barry and the musicians involved. Known for his work on previous Bond films, Barry had a knack for crafting music that complemented the narrative and emotional tone of each scene. In Moonraker, Barry's score is no different. The music swells during moments of tension, providing an auditory cue for the viewer to feel anxious or on edge. During romantic scenes, the score softens, creating an intimate atmosphere. Barry's use of strings, brass, and percussion is particularly noteworthy. The main title theme, Moonraker, features a soaring string section accompanied by a bold brass melody. This combination creates a sense of grandeur, fitting for a film about space travel and espionage. The soundtrack also includes several disco and funk-inspired tracks, which were popular at the time. These songs, such as Voodoo Chase and Bond 77, add a layer of excitement and energy to the film's action sequences. Interestingly, Barry chose to incorporate elements of classical music into the score as well. The use of a full orchestra, along with the inclusion of a waltz-like melody in Holly Goodhead, adds a level of sophistication and elegance to the film. Overall, the Moonraker score and soundtrack are a testament to John Barry's musical prowess. His ability to craft music that complements the narrative and emotional tone of each scene is truly remarkable. The score's intricate melodies and rhythms have left an indelible mark on the world of film music, and it continues to resonate with audiences today. The car chase scene in Moonraker is one of the most iconic moments in the film. It showcases the direction of British filmmaker Lewis Gilbert, who uses a combination of practical effects and stunt work to create a thrilling sequence. The scene features a speeding gondola on the streets of Venice, with James Bond in pursuit. The gondola driver skillfully navigates the narrow streets and bridges while Bond follows in a speedboat. The chase ends with a dramatic jump over a staircase, leaving the audience in awe. Moore's performance in this scene is noteworthy. He brings a sense of charm and wit to the character, making him both likable and formidable. His ability to convincingly portray Bond as a skilled driver and marksman adds to the excitement of the chase. The cinematography in this scene is also exceptional. Cinematographer Jean Tournier uses a variety of camera angles and movements to capture the action. The use of wide shots allows the audience to fully appreciate the unique setting of Venice. While close-ups add intensity to the chase, the vibrant colors of the city are beautifully captured, adding to the overall visual appeal of the scene. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It sets the tone for the rest of the film, establishing Bond as a suave and capable secret agent. The combination of direction, performance, and cinematography creates a thrilling and entertaining sequence that resonates with viewers. Interestingly, the stunt work in this scene was performed by a team of skilled drivers and stuntmen rather than Moore himself. This highlights the collaborative nature of filmmaking, with various professionals working together to create a compelling final product. In conclusion, the car chase scene in Moonraker is a testament to the power of effective filmmaking. Through strong direction, captivating performances, and stunning cinematography, it creates a memorable and impactful moment that continues to be celebrated by audiences today. Moonraker, released in 1979, is a James Bond film that has had a significant cultural and social impact. The movie, known for its space-themed plot, resonated with audiences through its blend of action, humor, and visual spectacle. The film's release came at a time when space exploration was a popular topic, thanks to the ongoing space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. This connection to real-world events made Moonraker particularly relevant and engaging for audiences. Moonraker also contributed to discussions on environmental issues, as the plot involves a villain who intends to wipe out human life on Earth and repopulate the planet from space. This theme, while presented in a fantastical context, reflected growing concerns about the environment and the need for conservation. In terms of pop culture, Moonraker introduced several elements that have become enduring aspects of the James Bond franchise. The film's space setting, for instance, offered a fresh and exciting backdrop for the series' signature action sequences. Additionally, the character of Jaws, a towering henchman with metal teeth, became a fan favorite and appeared in subsequent Bond films. Moreover, Moonraker showcased the series' ability to adapt to changing times and trends. By incorporating elements of science fiction and space exploration, 
the film demonstrated the franchise's versatility and capacity for innovation. In conclusion, Moonraker has left an indelible mark on popular culture. Its space theme plot, engagement with contemporary issues, and introduction of memorable characters have all contributed to its enduring appeal. Upon its release in 1979, the James Bond film Moonraker drew mixed reviews from critics. Some praised its grand scale and spectacular space sequences, while others criticized it for departing too far from the series' roots. The prominent British film magazine Empire gave Moonraker 3 out of 5 stars, commending its impressive visual effects and action scenes but noting that the plot felt thin compared to previous Bond films. American film critic Roger Ebert awarded the film 2 out of 4 stars, stating that while he enjoyed some aspects, it lacked the charm and wit of earlier entries in the franchise. Audiences seem to have embraced Moonraker, making it one of the highest grossing films of 1979. Its success at the box office demonstrated the public's appetite for big-budget spectacles and further solidified the James Bond franchise's place in popular culture. Despite the divided opinions, Moonraker did receive recognition during award season. The film was nominated for several BAFTAs, including Best Special Visual Effects and Best Sound. Additionally, it earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Visual Effects, showcasing the skill and innovation behind the movie's ambitious space sequences. These accolades serve as a testament to the hard work and creativity of everyone involved in the production of Moonraker. While the film may not be considered among the best Bond movies by all, its impact on both the franchise and cinema history cannot be denied. The filming of Moonraker, the 11th James Bond movie, was filled with fascinating stories. For instance, the production team had to deal with an unexpected setback when the original star, Roger Moore, fell ill. They had to quickly find a replacement. But luckily, Moore recovered and was able to return to the set. The film's budget was also a topic of discussion. Moonraker became the most expensive film ever made at the time, with a budget of $34 million. This was largely due to the elaborate sets and special effects, including a space station and zero-gravity scenes. One of the most memorable scenes in the movie is the gondola chase through Venice. To create the illusion of the gondolas racing through the canals, the production team built special rigs that allowed the gondolas to be propelled at high speeds. However, this caused quite a stir among the local gondoliers, who were not pleased with the disruption to their peaceful canals. The film's leading lady, Lois Childs, who played Holly Goodhead, had an interesting connection to the Bond franchise. Before being cast in Moonraker, she had turned down the role of Anya Amasova in the previous Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. She later regretted her decision and was thrilled to be offered a role in Moonraker. Despite the challenges and setbacks, Moonraker was a huge success and remains a fan favorite to this day. It was nominated for several awards, including an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. The film's legacy continues to resonate with audiences, showcasing the enduring appeal of the James Bond franchise. Moonraker, released in 1979, holds a significant place in film history as the 11th installment in the iconic James Bond series. As a successor to the groundbreaking spy film, The Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker took the franchise to new heights, literally and figuratively, by incorporating space-age technology and zero-gravity action scenes. The movie's influence on future filmmaking is evident in the way it popularized the concept of space-set action sequences. Filmmakers took note, and the following years saw a surge in science fiction films and television shows, integrating elaborate space battles and intergalactic espionage. Moonraker also left an indelible mark on the Bond franchise itself. The film's lavish sets, exotic locales, and state-of-the-art gadgets became staples in subsequent Bond films. Moreover, the film's success further solidified the idea of a suave, sophisticated, and unflappable secret agent, a character archetype that would continue to resonate with audiences for decades to come. In the wake of Moonraker's release, a number of films and television shows drew inspiration from its unique blend of action, humor, and science fiction. Among them were the Star Wars saga, which took the space opera genre to new heights, and the Stargate franchise, which explored the concept of interstellar travel and ancient alien civilizations. In conclusion, Moonraker's enduring legacy and influence can be seen in the countless films and television shows that have adopted its innovative concepts and engaging storytelling. By pushing the boundaries of what was possible in cinema, Moonraker left an indelible mark on the world of film and inspired a new generation of filmmakers to dream big and reach for the stars. 
Did you know that the 1979 movie Moonraker left a lasting impact on many viewers? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this classic film. Perhaps you were thrilled by the stunning visuals and groundbreaking special effects, or maybe you were captivated by the thrilling storyline and charismatic characters. Whatever your connection to Moonraker, we'd love to hear from you. Did the film inspire you to explore the world of cinema in new ways? Or did it spark a lifelong love of science fiction and space exploration? Share your stories with us and help us celebrate this iconic movie. If you're feeling inspired, why not take a moment to like and share this post with your friends and followers. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more cinematic explorations and discussions. We can't wait to hear from you and learn more about how Moonraker has touched your life. So don't be shy. Share your memories and experiences with us.